So you've been approved for a walmart.com selling account, but now you need to go through the setup process. Well, be sure to smash the like button because in this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to go through that process. There's one thing to sign up for an account, get approved for the account, then there's a four step process where you need to go through the whole entire setup of your account. By the end of it, you will have one item listed and in stock on walmart.com. And that's what this video is all about. I'm going to step you through or walk you through step by step exactly how to do it. Some parts are confusing and that's what I'm here. I've already done it twice, but I left one of my accounts pretty much at the setup phase so I can walk you through it myself. If you have yet to apply for an account on walmart.com, then be sure to check out the video above. It'll pop out right there. That's how to apply. And now after you apply and get approved, which should take like 30 minutes to maybe an hour, depending on if, if you did it properly. Once you get approved, then you just need to set it up. And that's a whole other video, which is this one. Also be sure to check down below because I have a service that I am thinking about starting that will help you get your Walmart account set up quicker and started quicker than if you were to do it yourself because there's some professional things that you will need. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and I'll see you inside my computer. All right, so here we are inside of my computer and this is once you get accepted, you have an account, you've been approved on Walmart, you log into the Walmart Seller Center, this is what it's gonna look like. So it's gonna say onboarding active, you're gonna get a bunch of emails. Walmart is actually pretty on top of sending you emails of what you need to do next, uh, calling you, they'll call you, they'll have somebody call you from what seems to be a local number to yours, but it's probably somebody in India most of the time calling you. Uh, at least that's what I got. But you know, they're pretty on top of getting you set up. So once you have the account, that does not mean that you're fully set up. So you need to go through this launch checklist, you're going to see this, you will most likely see it say two remaining, um, I got a little ahead of myself, and I already did one of the full things, but I'll show it to you, you're going to have four main things on your launch checklist, one is gonna be complete registration, which you're already going to have done, because that's what you need to do in order to get an account in order to get approved. That's when you apply. And I already have a video on that same thing with completing your payment pro, uh, information that is going to be when when you are creating your account or applying, you're gonna do it either through Hyper Wallet or I forget what the other one is. I went with Hyper Wallet, and you're gonna have two out of the four done pretty much. So all you're gonna need to do is complete your partner profile and item setup. Completing your partner profile is basically setting up the just you know the nitty gritty things about your account, basic things, and then item setup is gonna be listing an item and then putting it in stock. So let's go through your partner profile first. So all you need to do is click View. And it's gonna give you a bunch of these things. You can also if you click Settings right here, it's all these things in the partner profile. So uh, first you're gonna start with company info. So it's going to give you all of them across the top. And basically, there's a lot of surveys and things that pop up, it's gonna give them all all the you across the top, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they'll check it green once you're done. So first off, put in a display name, put in a logo optional, you don't need to, uh, it's I believe it's 400 by 100 or 400 by 50 is the logo size, something like that, uh, thin logo. And then you just need to put in a company description. Uh, mine's a little blurred out, but you know, it's basically at our store, we pride ourselves on having a large selection of items, blah, 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 blah. Nothing fancy, you can get into it fancy if you want, but you don't have to. After that, click save, you need to click save on everything, and then it should turn um, green little green check mark. Next is going to be customer service. All you need to do is put in a customer service policy. I put in two sentences. If you have any issues, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, no problem is too small. You know, you can put anything. You can put it longer if you want to sound nicer or, you know, just to get through this right now, just put something to get through it because you just need the check marks and you just need everything checked off in order to be officially done with the onboarding activity. And if you don't onboard fast enough, I do believe they put your account out on some sort of like, you know, wait list or something like that. I forget. I did it pretty much the first time around. This is the second time around. Uh, I did it relatively quickly. So next you need manage contacts. Basically, this is gonna be the contacts that you need that you're putting in charge of your business for all sorts of different things. It basically, I put the same name for everybody, my own name, and then my email, Altern alternate email automatically fills in, it's optional. You just click add contact and you put them in and then the phone number. You're gonna, I put myself in for everything. If you're somehow much bigger than my business is and you have other people, then put their names in for different specific things. But you know, if you're watching this video, then I'm sure you're probably just a single person like I am with virtual assistants. And this is who you would put in. Put yourself in, you can deal with it all later. Again, this is really just getting everything set up so that you're good to go. From there, you know, there's a there's some actual things that we need to start doing here, not just easy stuff. Um, shipping. So it says shipping profile has been upgraded to shipping templates. This is like 
new as of some recent amount of time. So you wanna click on take me to shipping templates. We're not gonna worry about two day shipping. We're not trying to you know, be the fastest out there, but we need to do three things in the seller fulfilled settings in the shipping templates area. So we need general shipping. We need to say what time zone we primarily ship from. If you're drop shipping and you know your supplier's location, put Eastern or whatever, or if they are in Eastern, just put whatever time zone either you're in or if you know your main supplier's location, or if you're only using one, then put them in there. Um, and then pretty much what time they, it doesn't even say actually, they, they pick their own time. I thought you could pick the time. You can put office closure dates. So you can go through here and say, oh, maybe this, you know, I'm closed on other days or we take specific weekends or something like that. You can go through the calendar and check them. I didn't really do any of that. And then you click save, make sure to click save everywhere. And then shipping policy, you know, you automatically have to do a 30 day policy is always included. Um, I don't I don't even know what that really means. And then at that point in time, we I just wrote, we always try to get your packages out same or next day, which is pretty true with wholesale dropshipping, I do expect to get it out the same or next day, usually the same day. At that point in time, we wanna click shipping templates. It's like the new thing that they just switched to. I just did a default shipping template. That's what it's set up to be. And then from here, you can go and edit the template. There's value, there's standard. So value is gonna be the one that shows up for everything. Then there's gonna be standard. You can pick standard. So value, transit time, you can click edit template. It's gonna be either seven, six or seven days. You pretty much have to have it. It's always enabled. And then at that point in time, you can pick specific states, you can exclude other states if you don't want uh, specific things, which is pretty much gonna be what specific regions, you know, I'm gonna say only the, the 48 contiguous states. Shipping rate model, the weight of the total order, is gonna be how we're going based off the shipping rate. Although I do offer free shipping on pretty much everything. So it doesn't really matter. And at that point in time, standard. So value, this is, that's, you can't really change much besides the, the time. Standard, you know, this is gonna be where you do have a little bit more Ability to change things, like I said, I don't do anything other than the 48. You can just click lower 48, call it a day. Um, click submit. And at that point in time, you can put this transit time, whatever you want, three, four or five days, uh, whatever works for you. And at that point in time, is there a rate? And then is there an additional rate per item? Again, you don't really need to get into the nitty gritty of this stuff. Just make sure that you have things set up so that you can get to the next section so that you get a little check mark so that you're good to go. All right, so then you click save template. It saves, you don't need to do anything special, wait for it, and then we're good to go. So at that point in time, you can scroll down. You don't have any SKUs so yet, so we're not gonna apply different SKUs, different shipping templates. There's a lot of different customizations you can do, but we don't need to do much of it. And then fulfillment centers, we're not gonna really have any fulfillment centers unless you do, then you can deal with it. It's, it's really nothing that you need. So at that point in time, you can go back, back to your launch checklist we did the shipping setting set up, so that should be good. Again, we can click on that, you know, brought you here. Once you're done with that, you should be good. And now we need to move on to returns. So I basically checked, I will manually issue all refunds within 48 hours of receiving the returned items. I'm assuming that if you don't check this, then Walmart will just do it for you. But again, I've always had this checked. And then, you know, accept the terms because you don't have any other a real way to do that. And at that point in time, you do need to add at least one return center. I just added, you know, my parents' address just because I needed that. I don't have a carrier account that I feel is necessary to add in. So I'm just gonna have them print the labels for me. And the one main issue with Walmart and drop shipping on Walmart in general is the fact that they can opt to send it back to a return center and that's going to go back to either a store or just some other place first. So they can pretty much, you can't give them the label and you don't wanna say, hey, like maybe you have two or three suppliers. You don't wanna say, hey, they're always gonna go back to this address, which is an address of one of your suppliers because you know, what if it's from the other supplier? So that is the biggest issue with the returns here. They can either send it back to a Walmart store which then gets sent to you or just send it straight back to you, which is going to go to someone's house or to a virtual address or something. You're gonna need some sort of setup here and that's one that a lot of the drop shipping people have issues with but you know with the margins being as high as they are now it's definitely less of an issue just because you do make a good amount of money so just add in an address here from there do you have a department rule i don't have any department rules at the moment just 30 day window we're good to go and then we don't have any keep it rules nothing like that like i said we're just trying to get through it return policy display settings items return window you can add information here i just skipped it all just to for the sake of the video just to get through it just get the green check marks now privacy policy i didn't really add very much to it you, you know we keep all information private there are 
are real legitimate privacy policies you can get. You can Google it, you can sign up for free ones. Pretty much saying that you're not gonna collect anyone's information, although you don't really get that much information, but you'll get their name and their address, obviously, when you sell an item. And just make sure that you are telling them that you're not going to collect it. There's real official ones that you can get for free, but again, you know, it's, it's just getting through with this process. None of this is legal advice. This is just getting through the checklist and the setup process of your Walmart account. And now we move on to taxes. So sales tax over the years has become extremely easy compared to what it once was. They pretty much collect for almost all the states for you. Anything that's in green, they anything that's black, they, they collect for you. I did add Kansas in there because I collect in Kansas. Um, and the only other one that they don't collect in yet is Florida. And I read something that I think as of July 1st, 2021 they start collecting in Florida so then and in Kansas I believe so at that point in time I think everything's covered except Missouri which doesn't have any rules yet so you can click whatever you want you can click the states if you wanted to collect in Florida then click confirm but I don't collect in Florida and click you're done at least for this account I don't and then do you you know have sales tax on shipping I don't really have shipping charges I'm gonna make everything zero so at this point in time, I'm just gonna say no sales tax on shipping but if you do and then do you <laughs> want to go through all of the tax codes you can it's um it's really not that fun but one thing that i will re that you do realize in here is that in the u.s tax codes there's one thing that just says retail general and you're pretty much good and then you can just sales tax policy and all i wrote was we charge sales tax to all states that we were required to pretty vague click save you're good so at this point in time you should be done with everything um at least on the on the complete your partner profile checklist. So last up, you're gonna need the item setup. So you click view right here. One is setup items, which basically is pretty vague way of saying list items. So there's a bulk upload, there's a setup by match, there's a single item setup, there's using API, using a solution provider, items, there's so many different things here. I did a bulk upload just because I really wanted to test it. You can do a single item setup, which is pretty easy. And I highly suggest you legitimately just like look at all of these articles. They do have a decent amount of help articles. All of these are help articles and they will give you a pretty good amount of information. So they teach you how to do it single, item again i didn't really want to do a single item because i wanted to see how the bulk one worked they give you a spreadsheet template and you pretty much just download it so that's that's that so you're going to go to manage items and then you can click on new item here and this is one way that you would do it you know if you're going to do it by hand one at a time but then there's also bulk updates and then you can upload bulk items here and do a bulk upload that way so you can go to manage items you can go to item setup and maintenance this is what they're showing you add a single item add items in bulk maintain items i did add items in bulk so you click that they give you a spreadsheet to download and pretty much all you need to do is find the items on or make sure that those items are on walmart um, and then i just matched by upc with my wholesale supplier and i did three at a time and it worked pretty well they, it all worked it was pretty slow but it did work obviously much faster than doing it by hand and then by match is another way to do it so that's that so look into whichever way you want to do it if you're just trying to get this done quickly just do one add a single item follow these steps and you're pretty much gonna be golden extremely quickly. And at that point in time, you really don't need much. You just need like a SKU UPC. Uh, and then if it's already on Walmart, which I suggest you do one that's already on Walmart, then it should happen. It should be uploaded pretty relatively quickly. And at that point in time, so I got that all checked up. And the last one is manage inventory. So if you click manage inventory, it's gonna take me to a place right here. And you know, pretty much at this point, I believe I just have to put them in stock. So I'm just gonna go to my manage items and then we're in the stage where it's not active yet because the inventory is not there. So I'm just gonna turn this one to submit, submitted and processing. There's so many little pop-ups on Walmart and stuff like that. And it's gonna take some time, but you know, it already checked off. So for the sake of the video, just add one to the inventory. And at this point in time, if I go back, you know, it should all be done. It do, I, I believe it just takes some time to load in the system that I, that I finished it. So that's pretty much that. I know it can be a little daunting. The first time I did this, it was pretty confusing, but I also just like felt rushed because I believe that they rush you if you don't do it all in time. And then at that point in time, I just like kind of sped my way through it. But this time, the second time around, I really just tried to make sure that I had already, I already know what I have to do. And then I went through and I just did it all properly the right way so pretty much everything that i did was what i will keep on my account except for just probably some of the vague explanations of like the shipping policy and the return policy and the tax policy and things like that i will go back oh and the privacy policy i will go back and put things more in depth more well worded 
more professional, which I highly suggest you do as well. But for the sake of the video, I was just trying to get through it as quickly as possible. So hopefully this video is helpful. You know, Walmart is one thing to get accepted, but it's also another thing to, you know, do the launch checklist and make sure that everything's done the right way. And I believe if I refresh it, I don't want to jinx myself, but it should say that I'm done. Now it says that there's three remaining. So like, oh, now it says there's zero remaining. So ready to launch. Now you're going to click this and you're going to be pretty much good to go. Hopefully this video is helpful. Hopefully it did walk you through step by step on what to do. Click your confirm you're ready to launch on walmart.com by continuing your confirming your ability to receive and process orders in accordance with Walmart. Um, make sure everything's set up. Make sure that you actually do have the things that you're ready to do and make sure that you have your shipping policy set up properly. Make sure that you have your hyper wallet or whichever payment processor that you decide to use set up properly. Make sure everything's good before you start going at this the wrong way because in the past I've been doing this for four years now almost. You know you you get excited, you jump into things and you set things up incorrectly. And then for the rest of the time that this store is running, you know, you're always playing catch up or, you know, oh, I got to go fix that. Make sure that you take the time, the extra couple days, maybe a week or whatever, to make sure that everything's set up properly and start on good foundation, because that's just one thing that I've learned over time that you don't want to do so or you don't want to mess up. So hopefully this video is helpful. If you have any questions, I'm sure there'll be a lot. Ask them down below. I'm going through this process at the same time. You all are, you know, like I've barely listed on Walmart, but this is the second time I made an account. So I figured, you know, I already know enough about that aspect of it. And, you know, there'll be more Walmart videos to come. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Smash the like button. Let's get this out to as many people as possible because Walmart is brand new to a lot of people. And thank you. I'll see you in the next video.